the High Life Factory, a 20th century historic concrete shell at risk of loss. This paper by Dr. Maricela Mendoza and Dr. Juan Ignacio del Cueto Ruiz Funes discusses the architectural heritage of the High Life Factory's concrete shells and the recent efforts to save them from demolition. The two decades that followed the end of the Mexican Revolution in 1920 witnessed a boom in the construction industry, and more profusely in Mexico City. In particular, the use of reinforced concrete as the modern material was promoted by important cement companies such as La Tolteca and in collaboration with prestigious artists and architects. The image on the right illustrates one of the first modern houses, the Cecil O'Gorman House, built in 1929 in Mexico City by the architect Juan O'Gorman. The house showcased the use of concrete in modern architecture. In 1939, the Spanish-born architect Felix Candela arrived in Mexico as an exile of the Spanish Civil War. Candela's arrival in Mexico coincided with the boom in the construction industry, and this became a fertile ground for him to materialize his ideas and knowledge on concrete shells. Candela's main contribution in the field of reinforced concrete shells is attributed to the profuse and ingenious use of the hyperbolic parabola geometry in the design and construction of concrete shells. In 1950, Candela co-founded with the Fernandez brothers the construction company Cubierta Sala and started to build his first experimental concrete shells as illustrated in this slide. The concrete shells that Candela designed and built in collaboration with other architects constitute material memory that bear witness to the socioeconomic and political developments that shaped the modernization of Mexico in the 20th century. The first HIPAR shell commissioned to Cubierta Sala was the Cosmic Rays Pavilion, built in 1952, and in collaboration with the architect Jorge González Reina. With this small concrete shell, Candela gained international recognition as it became the thinnest reinforced concrete shell ever built in the world at the time, with a thickness of only 1.5 centimeters at the crown. After his success in the Cosmic Race Pavilion, Candela was invited to collaborate with the prestigious architects Rafael Mijares, Enrique del Moral, and Pedro Ramirez Vázquez in other important government projects such as Coyoacán, Jamaica, and Anahuac markets in Mexico City. These markets were commissioned as part of a governmental plan to equip Mexico City with adequate infrastructure and industrial facilities, and which had been stagnant during and after the first decades following the Mexican Revolution. These markets, as illustrated in the images of this slide, were roofed using Candela's standardized construction system of reinforced concrete HIPAR umbrellas. Coyoacán and Anahuac markets are still operational and in good condition, but unfortunately the umbrellas of Jamaica market were demolished after the earthquake of 1985. The Jamaica market umbrellas were a unique piece in the repertoire amongst the thousands of shells built by Candela during his professional career in Mexico, as it was the first time when he designed and built an eight-sided umbrella. Also during this period, Candela received a vast number of commissions from the private industry to design and build factories and warehouses in Mexico City. The High Life Factory, completed in 1955, is without doubt one of the most iconic factories built by Candela during this period. Located in the oldest colonial area of Mexico City, the High Life Factory is only a couple of streets away from Coyoacán Market, and it is surrounded by art galleries and museums, including the famous Frida Kahlo Museum, as illustrated in the map of this slide. The umbrella shells of the High Life Factory are unique as they are the first umbrellas in which Candela explored the design of perforated concrete shells. The second and last time that Candela designed and built perforated shells was in 1958 for the insignia of the, of the Great Southwest Corporation in Fort Worth, Texas, and in collaboration with the American engineer O'Neill Ford. However, the remarkable lighting effect also posed two practical challenges. The first one was a significant rainwater leak through the perforations of the shells due to the cracking of the glass blocks. And the second was that direct daylight entering from the roof perforations overheated the interior spaces. To solve this, the perforations were covered with an external asphalt membrane and the shells lost their lighting effect.
unlike Los Manantiales restaurant, which suffered structural damages caused by the 1985 and 2017 earthquakes, the High Life Factory structure is sound and safe. However, the umbrellas of the factory are at risk of loss as the building became the relict after the owners of the factory decided to relocate the production to the state of Aguascalientes in 2016. Furthermore, the property owners have recently put to planning application proposals where total or partial demolition of the shells has been proposed to build residential dwellings. Fortunately, both proposals were revoked by the National Institute of Fine Arts, who is in charge of the safeguard of 20th century historic buildings. The National Autonomous University, also known as UNAM, has recently explored the possibility of purchasing the derelict factory to rescue it and make it part of its hub of educational buildings in Coyoacán. The images in this slide shows a rehabilitation proposal for the High Life Factory proposed by Hector Martinez Mota, who is a final year architecture student at UNAM. Candela's legacy in the field of concrete shells for industrial buildings expanded to Latin America, the United States and Europe. Without doubt, the High Life Factory is one of the finest industrial shells built by Candela. As stated by the Mexican National Institute of Fine Arts, the High Life Factory is a relevant example of the modern movement in Mexico, and every effort must be made to have it preserved. Thank you for your interest in our paper.